All right, so welcome back. Let me go ahead and start. So I have actually good news uh, for, uh, for Zoom, for the Zoom audience. We managed to actually connect this laptop to LAN. So now we are no longer on Wi-Fi and hopefully the hiccups will go away. It seems that nevertheless, uh, it was just a few hiccups and the recording should be safe. So we'll see when we put it on YouTube, but uh, that, that should all be all right. Uh, so let us know if the quality has improved the quality is much better. All right, this is really awesome. So thank you very much, Fabio, for organizing this. We actually had to learn that some of the plugs here do not work and we knew we had to know exactly where to plug the, the, the LAN cable. But now this is all done. All right, so let's continue with the lecture scope. So data science is very large. There's many things you do in there, but uh, one dimension for looking at that is that we have databases, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, which actually go up that stack with data becoming information, becoming knowledge, becoming wisdom. Um, at the risk of disappointing you, we are not going to do any artificial intelligence of machine learning in this lecture. It doesn't mean that there's not a link, it actually connects, and I show you how actually with RumbleDB you can execute machine learning pipelines right from the same language where you actually process the data but we are going to focus on databases. So it's my pleasure to introduce you to the TA team uh, of, uh, of uh, DC, and we have new TAs who are joining us uh, uh, as we speak. Um, so we have, uh, I'll start with uh, who we have in the room. Uh, so we have here Fabio, uh, who is uh, uh, going to moderate every week the lecture. He's making sure to interrupt me if there's a raised hand either here in the lecture hall or on Zoom. You should never hesitate to raise your hand and ask questions. For the lecture hall, we, we have this super cool new toy. If you can show it uh, over there, the purple microphone, we can throw this just around somehow and uh, it will not break. And you can speak in it and ask your questions. Um, on Zoom, we have the Zoom chat and uh, Fabio is also uh, monitoring the Zoom chat to make sure that, uh, uh, that uh, we are not missing any questions over there. So I'll be interrupted. If that's the case, you should never hesitate to ask questions over Zoom. Uh, all the more that I noticed that actually since we've had Zoom, I have more questions than before in the lecture hall. So I suspect that maybe some might be shy and it's uh, easier to ask a question in the Zoom chat. So if you want to ask a question and you're in the lecture hall and you don't dare raising your hand, just try either on elements, we can also monitor elements, right? So ask in the element chat uh, or in the Zoom chat and we'll also make sure that we answer it, right? But uh, you're totally safe to raise your hand and speak, right? Because it's very likely when you ask a question that you'll be asking a question that many other people had. So you'll have actually many grateful people in the room. Ah, I'm super happy uh, that she asked this question, right? So don't hesitate to do that. Okay. Uh, so we also have you right here who is uh, with us. Uh, so any other TAs in the room, hidden maybe in the background, nobody, okay. So they're all working very hard preparing all the, all the assignments. So we have uh, John Howe, who is the head TA uh, of the lecture. So he man he's managing the TA team. Fabio, I already introduced uh, him to you. Susie, uh, who is right here. Uh, we, we have uh, Yuhui, we have uh, Lam, uh, Matt, and uh, Jin Yi, right? So we have uh, a, a dream team and we also have Grigori, who, uh, who is about to join us very soon. That's very recent. Actually, we've just uh, uh, interviewed him. And uh, then we might actually, because now there's more than 250 of you, so we might be able to get even one more TA uh, on board. So we'll see uh, what, uh, what we can do about it, right? So uh, maybe a big round of applause for the, for the TA team. All right, so with the TA team, we are going to teach you plenty of things, hopefully during this semester, they have to do with what I've told you so far. Uh, so we are going to look at how to store data in cloud storage, uh, in S3, Azure Blob Storage and so on, HDFS. We're gonna look at syntax. Then we are, look, we are gonna look at data models. For example, keep relational data in tables, but much bigger with white column stores like HBase. You might have heard also of Cassandra, of Bigtable at Google and so on. We are going to also to look at messy data models. How do you model messy data? And here I mean XML, JSON, and so on. We'll see that this is actually denormalization of tables. We can formalize this, and we will formalize this. So this is why we are going to look also at the JSON and the XML, YAML also, which is actually the same data model. Well, I can tell you already now, they're pretty much the same. It's just trees. 
it turns out what, that we can validate the data. And when we validate the data, what do you get? Guess what? Data frames, which are actually a bit of a hype. Uh, so we look into schema validation languages to actually turn your messy data into data frames. Uh, that you can manipulate if you really want that with pandas but hopefully you will realize that there's also other languages that make it much easier uh, and then we look into data processing with map reduce where we can process on thousands of machines data in parallel we are going to do a bit of resource management but a bit less than in previous years so i'm scaling that a bit down uh, apache spark which is a generalization of map reduce to make it even bigger and uh, on on more generic uh, data flow patterns then we are going to look at document stores, which are one of the SQL databases that uh, that uh, was also, it's still very popular, right? But uh, th there were billions of dollars invested in these companies back then. So MongoDB is one of the many examples uh, that we can use. So since it's one of the more popular ones, we are going to look at it. Then query languages. So there's obviously SQL that is very important to query uh, uh, flat tables. Uh, and then we'll see how do we query messy data where the data is denormalized like trees, not necessarily uh, uh, structured as data frame. So we look into JSONIC, but by now there's probably 30 languages that do the same. It doesn't really matter. They, they, they all more or less do the same and work in the same way. You learn one, you've learned them all, right? So we are going to, to uh, study uh, JSONIC and then RumbleDB, which is this project I told you about. So this is the menu for the entire semester. What's very important is that this all fits together. This is a whole, all of these parts interact uh, with each other. So there's the weekly lectures that are taking place today, Tuesday, two to four, then on Wednesdays, nine to 10, right there in the main building for those of you who uh, wants to attend that early. I suspect that we might have a bigger Zoom attendance tomorrow, somehow in the morning. This is patterns I noticed in the previous years, uh, but I'm happy to give you that flexibility. So you, you, you're also free to attend over Zoom if you prefer. We'll try to figure out the LAN connection over there. Maybe we find out also the, where, where we have to plug the cable. Uh, all right, I suspect that there might actually not be any cable. So we, we, we can also try to see if we get one. I'm just making a, a, a note uh, of that. Okay, so we have these lectures. I really encourage you to attend. You can also watch us from the future on YouTube if you prefer, but if you attend, you can ask questions, which, uh, which is actually a cool feature of live lectures. So then you have the exercise sessions. You have some on Fridays, some on Wednesdays. If the groups become full and you cannot register anymore, throw us an email, we'll find solutions. As I said, we have new TAs who are joining us. Uh, then you have a lot of self-study time. Why? Because you get 10 credits. 10 credits is a lot. So this is why you will have a few reading assignments, you will have some exercises to do, you'll have Moodle quizzes and so on. But this is a great way if you get familiar with actually playing with the technology, you get a feeling for how uh, it works. And then finally, in the winter session, you are going to have a computer exam. A computer because it's basically a Moodle environment, so similar to the quizzes you will have. Uh, you'll be in a big room, either in early cone or in the main building. Uh, solving on a computer, you have an installation of PostgreSQL with pre-populated data. Uh, you will have also uh, uh, Spark installed on it, RumbleDB and so on. So we'll tell you precisely what you will have. We'll even give you the data sets in advance and even the environment uh, so that you can, uh, you, it will be fully predictable for you. You know what to expect. All right, so we even give you three hours. We try here, do not be scared by the three hours. The point of that is to give you more time. Right, so we try to calibrate the exam in such a way that we have a reasonable number of you who will leave early. Uh, and uh, with three hours, it gives you time to actually reread, you know, check again your answers and so on. So we, we always try to adapt the size of the exam and the complexity every year based on the, on the, on the feedback that we get. Uh, and uh, and uh, so far, I think we are around 60 questions seems to be about right uh, for a, uh, to, to, to fit in less than three hours. All right. And if you pass the exam, you get 10 credit points. And there is more. Um, you have the opportunity to get a quarter point more on your, on your exam by solving quizzes during the semester. So the way it works is that you're going to have 25 mini quizzes during the semester. Every quiz you pass, you get 0 0.01 points. Do not underestimate how attractive that is. 
because the number of students who actually take the opportunity to solve the quizzes is very, it's almost everybody, basically. That's exactly the goal of the bonus points. The goal of the bonus point is to encourage you to work during the semester already on the material, because if you already work now, it's going to make it much easier to rehearse for the exam, because it's your long term memory who is actually taking care of the of the knowledge. Uh, so it's, it's, it was really a great idea. It was all standardized a while back at ETH with this uh, continuous performance assessments. And uh, I think it was really great. And so this is why we give you this, uh, this uh, extra, up to a, an extra quarter point uh, if you pass the quizzes. So do not hesitate to, uh, to, solve, the, uh, uh, to solve the problems. Uh, there's just uh, uh, a disclaimer that if you get a six, you will not get 6.25. That's not how it works, right? But I think that if you get a six, you're already in a very good place anyway. All right, so this is how it works. And so we, we, have, we compute out of the mark of the exam the raw grades, and then we add the bonus points, and then we round to the next quarter point right, to get an ETH grade. Okay, um, now for the exercises, the practical exercises will mostly be using a Docker Compose uh, technology so that it works on your laptop. Because yes, even though it's big data, in order to learn it, there, you will be surprised by how much your laptop can do. Right, how things run on a single laptop. You're going to be able to play with many technologies using Docker. And then in December, we are going to use uh, large clusters of machines on top of Azure. We used to do it every week with small clusters, but uh, we realize it's actually more fun if we do it, just go all in during one week with something super big, right? So this is why this is the way we are going to do it. And then in this week, you're going to have the whole stack, you know, HDFS with Spark, with RumbleDB, JSON, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, everything working nicely together, uh, hopefully wrapping up everything that we've been learning. All right, a few hints. Uh, that's a request that uh, was done in the, in the previous years uh, for a while is to have a textbook for the lecture, because sadly there doesn't seem to exist a textbook that teaches big data, at least in the way that I, I think it should be taught. So in, this is why I was, really, I was using many reading assignments, many papers, many chapters of books. Um, but now I have finally started writing that, uh, that uh, textbook. Uh, I'm halfway through, so I have eight of the chapters that are there. We're going to use them. I'm going to continue to, to, to write the remaining ones uh, uh, as fast as I can. And uh, if I manage to do it in time, then we'll also use them during the semester. But in any case, it's, uh, it's all online. You can download it directly from there, from this uh, URL here. You also see the status update of the number of chapters. But obviously, I will keep you uh, up, up, up to date whenever I, I, I put a new chapter over there, right? If you find typos, anything, do not hesitate to let me know so I can fix it, right? So the first two to three chapters, I already got a lot of feedback from the previous semester. The new chapters are new, so there's probably mistakes in there. So let me know, right? It's very close to what I'm doing in the lecture. It's basically a verbatim of, uh, of what I'm teaching you. But I, I know that for some of you, reading things can actually be a, a better way to learn, right? So this is where you can find it. And thank you for pasting it into the chat. Very appreciate it. And you can just, you can just click. Um, all right. Then this is the next thing. We have a chat server that you can find at element.in.ethd.ch. Please all connect there once. You will not find the course space necessarily, but it's just to activate your account there. Just use your ETH login and password, right? Go there, ETH login and password as if it were an existing account and just log in once. Then what I'm doing regularly is that I, 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 I'm trying to add you from EDOT, the list of your uh, accounts, and uh, I'm adding you in batches to the, uh, this is an example of batch processing. So I'm adding you in batches to the, to the chat. So you can interact with each other, you can interact with us, uh, knowing that the primary channel for asking questions, I think will be on Moodle, uh, right? So uh, I think this is this slide right there. All the material of the lecture will be there on the, in the Moodle app. It's all hosted at ETH. The chat server is also at ETH, by the way, so you're safe on ETH servers. Uh, and here there's the course material. There will be uh, 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 either the Moodle forum or a new feature called Moodle Overflow that looks like Stack Overflow in order to ask questions. Uh, so this is the other part to get. All of these links, of course, they are probably in the, in, you know, in the uh, uh, for les uns uh, in the course catalog, you can find them. If you have any trouble, just write us an email and, uh, and we'll help, right? So these are all the places, the, the most important places to find everything. And of course, the recording, it's also linked from the Moodle. You will find everything there, the, the slides, the exercises, uh, and the YouTube videos uh, you can also find there. Okay. Um, was it the last slide? Yes, it was the last slide. Okay. 
So this is the end of uh, the introduction part. Now I'm going to move over to the SQL brush up. Before we do, I would like to give you an opportunity to ask any questions, anything that is unclear that you would like to clarify. What's interesting during the break is that I got a lot of questions on causality. So it seems to be a topic that interests uh, many of you. Uh, and uh, indeed, it's a very exciting topic. There's many courses at ETH that, uh, that, that go into, into this. Uh, you had a question? Uh, can we throw maybe the microphone? That's what it's for. Let's play with that. Yes. So let me just increase the volume. Normally, that should work. Go ahead. Let's try it. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. So I was curious, how do we know which? So I saw that there are multiple groups for the exercises lesson. How do you know which one we're supposed to go to? Or do we just go to whichever one we want? So for the exercise groups, uh, you should register on my studies and pick one of the groups, and then you get a TA in a room, right? Um, what's important to know is that this week, there is no exercise session. So you don't have to worry this week about it. It's going to start next week. Uh, and you should go to the place that your group, uh, uh, that, 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 that is next to your group in, the, in my studies, right? Is that binding? Like, can we change it later? Or do we just stick with the same group for the whole thing? Uh, it is binding because of capacity, capacity reasons. Because uh, basically, the capacity is based on the room size. Um, however, it might be during the semester that the attendance drops a bit, as is usual in all courses. And then it becomes a bit more flexible. But as, as a general rule, please try to come to the session that you have been uh, assigned to for the, capacity, uh, for the capacity reason, right? And if you notice that everything is full or there's a problem with Friday, Wednesday, please write to us and we'll, uh, we'll try to find a solution, right? Did it answer your question? Awesome. Any other question? Yes? Yep. There is one question on Moodle. So awesome. On, oh, sorry, let's go on Zoom and then you'll ask your question. Yes, there's one question on Zoom. Do you recommend a specific OS to, the, to run the Docker containers? Uh, yes, in the first week, uh, you will try the Docker container, right? So th there will be a release of all the instructions to do that. And you'll have a chance to, uh, to uh, seek support from the TA team. I think there is a support session planned, right? Yeah. So there will be a support hour of which you will be informed. And then you can simply connect there and uh, people will help you make uh, sure that your Docker is working. So in the first week, you will have this opportunity to check that Docker is working. In the worst case, in the second week, when we start with PostgreSQL, we, we can still continue to help you if it still doesn't work, right? But the first week is really, there's no exercise session, just a support session, just check that Docker is working. Okay, you had a question? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so regarding the, the quizzes, um, so when do they start and like how do we take them? Is, are they during the lectures or is it like a... So the quizzes are going to be released everywhere, every week at a specific time. Is it Wednesday at noon? I, I think it was this, but we have to confirm, but yeah. Okay, so I'm not going the... to answer, I'll tell you yes. when. <laughs> it will be announced, uh, but then it will be every week the same and you will have probably seven days in order to solve it. Then it closes again. You can do it from the comfort of your home. Right, and then take your, you. all the time you need in order to solve, right? Thank you. That would be awful. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. If, if, you pass, if you pass, you get the points. Even if a hundred people have passed before, this is not a competition. You, you are not competing against each other. You can help each other. You can work together. Even the exam is not a competition, right? Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Yes, there's Can one there. Do we need to bring uh, our laptop to the tutorial sessions? Uh, that's, a, I think it can be useful. I right? couldn't understand what. Uh, bringing the laptop to the exercise session. I think it's a good idea generally. Probably. Yeah. 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 Because you can work on Docker then and the uh, program live. So, yes, I would encourage you to do that. Yeah. By the way, if you need laptops, there is the Neptune uh, session, which is an opportunity at ETH to buy laptop for cheaper prices. Just so you know, you should receive emails about that, right? Yeah. Okay, so we should move on now to the next part. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm saying goodbye for that uh, series of slides and I'll see you on the other sides.